Hello, today we will be going over tutorial 6 in the Varsal package. This tutorial covers time varying and time aggregate sensitivity, sensitivity analysis with GVARS. In the following exercise, we will be doing sensitivity analysis of the HBV SASC time series outputs when inputs are non-uniform and cor correlated. An example or research question that relates to the problem may be, suppose you have a hydrologic model with several uncertain parameters whose distributional properties are known, for example, inferred by model inversion. According to these properties, the associated uncertainty to some parameters seem to be significantly higher than that of other parameters. This model runs on a long time period, which includes different types of hydroclimatic conditions such as dry and wet spells, and estimates different flux or state variables over time. Which uncertainty sources matter the most in predicting a state or flux variable under different hydroclimatic conditions? Which ones matter the least? Is the significance of an uncertainty source changing over time as hydroclimatic conditions change? These are the questions that we must ask for an exercise like this. So to get started, we need to import the important libraries, including TSGVARS and the model class. Please note that I have run the notebook previously, so you will already see the numbers run. But just for example, to run a cell, you press shift enter here and the numbers should change. Now we can introduce the model. We define the function of interest and in sensitivity analysis, and here that will be the HBV SASC model that returns a time series of model responses. The output of the model here could be the time series of a flux or a state variable over a given time period. In here, we can see the function defined. Now you can wrap the function of interest with the model class by doing so below. This is just so that the model can run in the GVARS program. Here we can run the wrapped function for an arbitrary input and check the model response. I'll do that here just to do a quick double check. And we see that it returns a time series output. Now to set up the TSG vars, we need to create a parameters variable, which is a dictionary where the keys are the variable names and the values are the distribution parameters and the distribution type. We also need to make a correlation matrix, which is put inside of a NumPy array shown here. The rest of the parameters can be filled in as desired. Now, when you run GVARS, you will see these loading bars and they will continue to fill up. I ran this previously, so now they are all complete. So now we can check out the results. Similar to GVARS, TSGVARS generates all the sensitivity indices, including IVARS, Sobel total order effect, and the Morris elementary effect. But unlike GVARS that generates sensitivity indices for a single model output, TSGVARS does so for time series of model outputs. The following cells will look at IVARS 50, which is the total variogram effect only, but the user has the option to use other indices as already shown for VARS and GVARS. If you want to see those, please take a look at the earlier tutorials. Here we can see the printed out values for IVARS, and now we can take a look at some of the plots. And we can see that the sensitivities change over time, different time steps. We can also look at time aggregate sensitivities. The first level of time aggregation is through a cumulative frequency distribution of time series of sensitivity index for each, individual, for each individual parameter. The distributions that are more extended to the right correspond to parameters that are more strongly influential. And here is a plot showing that. The second level of aggregation, the most compact form, takes the mean of the time series of sensitivity index over the simulation time period for each individual parameter. The table below shows the time aggregate I bars for all scale ranges of interest. Now we will plot scale 0 0.5. Here we can see that PM is the most influential parameter and on a log scale we can differentiate the other parameters better. For further results we can look at time normalization of the sensitivities. So when we are investigating time aggregate and time varying sensitivity indices, as shown above, we have treated each individual time step as being of equal importance. However, during some time steps, the responses of a model may exhibit more variability than during other time steps, reflecting dynamics of the model and, importantly, the strength of its forcings. In such cases, the behavior of the more dynamically active time steps may, when summarized into a single time aggregate sensitivity index, obscure the information contained in less active time steps. For some purposes, therefore, it may be desirable to adjust the weights assigned to different time steps to achieve a more desirable balance. We can investigate this and in the results after time normalization, shown below. 
Here are the values printed, and now we can take a look at the plots. Here, we can take a look at this plot. I'll leave it here for a few seconds to look at it. And here, we can take a look at the O plot. But there is some differences as we have now normalized the results. We can also plot the cumulative frequency distributions of the time normalized time series for each individual parameter. The distributions that are more extended to the right correspond to parameters that are more strongly influential. We can see here that K2 extends farthest to the right, then PM, then ETF, and then TT. Now, the table below shows the time normalized time aggregate I bars for all the scale ranges of interest. Now we can choose a scale range, and here we chose 0 0.5, and look at the plots again. Here, with the normalized results, we can see that K2 and FRAC are actually pretty sensitive, but they were overrun by PM before there was normalization. And that is it for tutorial 6. Thanks for watching.